Hello, 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 hello. I say hello a lot at the beginning because it takes ages for the audio to settle down. I don't know why, but that's <laughs> that's why I do it. I say hello a lot, so more hellos. Hopefully the, the audio has by now settled down. Very nice to have you with us. It's episode number, I think this is episode number 192 of this show, This Week in WordPress. We do it every Monday at 2 p.m. UK time. Each week we feature a panel of interesting people. And uh, today we've got a returning member of the show. We've got Davinda coming back. I'll introduce him in a moment properly. But we've got some new people on the show. We've got uh, Jess Frick and we've got Bet Hannon. Uh, very, very quickly, I'm going to introduce them one at a time. They've written me a little biography. But um, let's go, let's go, let's go with Jess first. Jess is the Director of Product at Nexus. I'm sure you've heard of Nexus before, where she's focused on bringing the best web applications to consumers with the best performance possible. Although she's been building websites for nearly 30 years, she fell in love with WordPress in 2008, has been devoted ever since. And she's not obsessing about all things digital. Digital, You can find her enjoying quality time with her family, bringing a sci-fi series, watching roller skating or dog videos, or brewing some iced tea. Very welcome to you, Jess. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. I figured that roller skating and dog videos were very important to the bio. Yes. Um, I think it's a good positioning statement. No, I for, think so. You know. Now I'm yeah. feeling ashamed because I don't do either of those things. <laughs> I feel there's a significant lack of dog skating and roller icing. Um, you know what? Years. I would love a crossover. <laughs> if we can get dogs on roller skates, it's yeah, drinking be iced tea. Awesome. This would be. I feel TikTok is the place for this. Not not a podcast about WordPress. <laughs> but, um, Jess, your your video seems to have jittered to a sudden stop. We can hear you well enough, but if at any point you struggle with that, just click refresh and I'll let you in immediately if that does happen again. Um, we also have with us Bet Hannon and Bet is the founder and CEO of Bet Hannon Business Websites, which is a full service WordPress agency with a specialization in web accessibility. Find out more about that in a little while. She's also been a contributor on the WP support team, a WordCamp volunteer and is the co-organizer of her local WordPress meetup in Bend, Oregon. Very nice to have you with us, Bet. Great to be here. Yeah, very nice. You um, you expressed concern about your um, your broadband capabilities today as well. So hopefully, if, if one of us yeah. keeps refreshing, we'll get you back in if anything goes wrong. Not a problem. Very nice to have you. And finally, returning. I don't know how many times you've been on the show, uh, Davinda, but it's definitely more than one. Davinda Sinkaith probably doesn't need too much of a mention to people in our audience, but I'm going to do it anyway. Davinda is a creative who loves to create online spaces powered by WordPress in the ecosystem for 15 plus years, focused on creating websites, digital products, courses, coaching, and consulting to help online businesses grow in the right spirit, direction, and profits. Hi, Davinda. How are you doing? Hi. See how much time I spent in drafting that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort of sits in a sits in a Google Doc somewhere and just get whipped out from time to time. Very, very nice to have you all with us. We've um, we've got a lot to talk about. We always drone on about WordPress. That's the intention. Towards the end, we stray off topic a little bit and go off in different directions, depending on what I or the, the contributors have brought today. Um, welcome back, Jess. If it goes wrong again, just do exactly the same thing and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that you pop right in. Okay, let me share my screen. Feel free, guys, because I know that two of you have not been on the show before. You might feel that you need to sort of constrain your comments or when you say it, don't worry about that. Just interrupt if you feel you've got something to say. I have a total case of verbal diarrhea often, and I'll just keep talking. So just so this is like those videos of the British, you know, government thing where they all just talk over. Oh. Exactly. Do that. Do exactly. That's what I'm used to. Do exactly that. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Before we get stuck into the WordPress news, this is WP Builds. This is our website. If you want to go there, feel free. There's a few links at the tops to the subscribe link. Just here is probably the best one if you want to stay up to date with all the bits and pieces that we do. There's some newsletters, YouTube channel, and blah de blah de blah But um, yeah, if you want to go there, that would be really nice. Another thing to mention is if you want to participate in the chat for this, you are going to need um, to go to a special URL if you're on Facebook. It's chat.restream.io forward slash FB. It's actually in the what's it called? The little post at the top. Uh, it's there already. But if you don't want to be anonymized, you need to do that. 
because otherwise we just see a little generic avatar and your name doesn't appear. If you're on YouTube, you need to be logged into Google and probably the best way to find this is to go to wpbuilds.com forward slash live. Can I recommend that while I introduce the first topic, you just open up a new tab, go to Twitter or Facebook and just share that out. Let everybody know that that's what you're doing for the next 20 minutes, even if you've got it on in the background and maybe you'll be able to drag some people into contribute to our discussion today. Okie doke. Uh, hello, Peacher. How are you doing? She's the first one to make a comment today. That, uh, nice to see you. We'll be talking about you in a minute. Your ears must be burning. Okay, so let's get stuck into the first bit today. Um, this is over on WordPress.org. If you follow WordPress closely, you will know that WordPress 5.9, which was supposed to come out before Christmas, it was postponed for a variety of reasons. And it's big. It is a really, really big update. I would say probably one of the biggest updates to WordPress since I've been covering WordPress stuff. Absolutely huge. And Marcus Kazmierkat, he does a great job here. There's a thing called the WordPress 5.9 field guide where he breaks down all the bits and pieces that are coming. He's broken it down into things like what the block editor is going to build and boy, there is a lot in there. Uh, there's a lot of performance-related things. There's quite a lot concerning the core API and internationalization and themes and customizer. Probably the most important thing that, that is on the tip of everybody's tongue is all to do with blocks and full-site editing. And I just wanted to open this one up. If any of you are following 5.9 closely, I was just curious to know of this piece that Mike has put together, sorry, Marcus has put together, just wondering what your most exciting features are for 5.9. Anybody want to interrupt? Go for it. I think uh, with this release, uh, it's like blocks will become almost like baby page builder to build layouts rather than just create editor content. I think the two uh, specific things that caught my attention was obviously the navigation block, because again, you need navigation if you're going to use blocks to build a proper website, right? And the other one for that would be really game changer for agencies wanting to adopt blocks with locking blocks. You know, you can lock the blocks with the capability of certain editing level and templates. That will be really cool. Do you know, well, you've, kind of, you've been able to kind of do that in the code. I mean, as an agency, we found how to do that from the very beginning, but it's going to be a lot more um, easy to do that, I think, going forward. And, and that certainly will be the case. And not just agencies, but large organizations. So you have a big university that's using WordPress. They definitely will want to lock things down from um, so they keep people on brand. Yep. I've put, the, because... I've put the bit on the screen about that. Um, it's here. It's locking blocks in mm -hmm. WordPress 5.9. I'll, I'll just read it in case anybody who's listening to this didn't know this was coming. Um, there is more. You can continue reading uh, over on the, the page itself. But it says to, to facilitate better... Uh, creating better patterns and templates, WordPress 5.9 comes with a new block level locking mechanism that works alongside template lock. Instead of applying a lock to all inner blocks, you can apply it selectively to individual blocks via the lock attribute. Yeah. Um, the block level locking would supersede the inherited template lock value. I confess I knew this was coming, but I don't really have any insight into what what the granularity of that is and how much you can lock out and which bits, you know, whether you can lock out the, I don't know, the color picker as opposed to the ability to edit text or the ability to change font size. And I just don't know what the colors, fonts, is. the layout, all of those kinds of things, right. That would the change the style and then you get to deal with the con content. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's really exciting. So the, the block locking, uh, caught Devinder's attention, full site editing. Jess, anything to add to that? I was actually going to say the same thing Taco said nice. in the chat is uh, internationalization. They're giving us a language picker when you log in, which is fantastic. Um, one of my favorite plugins that I've been watching very closely is Weglot. I don't know if you guys have played with it, but the way that they make it so easy to bring different languages into your website is fantastic. Seeing WordPress core take this step into that area, I think, is just going to make things even better for our global friends. 
I'm sorry, uh, Jess, the, the, the addition of the comment from Taco has actually completely obliterated your image. This is a, this oh, is it's a problem, okay. it's a problem <laughs> systemic in the platform. There's not much we can do about it. You know it. what, bro? We get to see his pretty icon. and <laughs> That's <laughs> right. He's clicked the link in the, in the show notes. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a really interesting point. I did wonder... When when this all happened in 5.0 and one of the four stages of the the block editor was going to be internationalization, I did wonder what the business model for companies like Weglot and WPML. I, I did wonder if they were sort of quaking in their boots that their the shelf life of their product was going to be smaller. You know, in five years' time, everybody's just going to be using the core components to do this. But again. Uh, forgive me, Taco, I don't have a, a lot of detail on this in my head about what it is that this is going to be able to do, whether whether it's going to be a really basic implementation and and things like WPML and um, Weglot, which have all sorts of amazing things, including the ability to send your text off to be translated and then just inject yeah. it back into the post and page. I don't know if it's going to have any of those kind of capabilities in it, so we'll, we'll have to see. Um, for me, it's definitely the full site editing navigation block. That's the kind of thing which has tweaked my interest over the over the near term. But okay, if I'm excited else... to see the performance mm -hmm. imp improvements, the performance improvements, and and uh, kind of moving us toward PHP eight, getting getting more of that kind of ready for for prime time. So yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yep. you know it's terrible yep. to say, but I feel like I'll believe it when I see it. Performance. <laughs> what PHP yeah. eight point zero? Okay. <clears throat> yeah. No, the the performance improvements they're promising with five point nine. Ah. Well, you know, so much of that of just depends on what you've got going on a particular site, right? If, exactly. If, but because but, you, know, you know, even people can ruin a website made on blocks. Also, just uh, make a <laughs> website on blocks and add. Now we have so many blocks add on, right? If one doesn't have that module, get another one, right? Yes, yeah. The, the, yeah. we're going to have the tyranny of like 74 different block packs <laughs> and no conception of what was used. Um, a friend of mine recently took over a site and I believe he said that the site is dependent upon, I think he said eight, eight different suites of block packs. You know, the commercial block packs were available. I think this website had eight and, and it was built in such a way that it is bound to them. It's going to be a really big job to unpick all of that and go with just simple core blocks um, or something equivalent, you know, building your own blocks to satisfy the needs. So this is yeah. definitely an issue. Sounds like your friend's doing the Lord's work over there. Yeah, that's right. That, that is, right. <laughs> that is <laughs> untangling those is not fun. Yeah. yeah. The the link the link to this piece, though, is over on make.wordpress. I'll just, I, I, really, it's pointless putting it in the, um, in the, anything other than the show notes which will accompany this but you can find it here it's at make.wordpress.org uh it was released on the 10th of january and you can see that marcus was the author so you can probably track it down in that way we've got a few comments coming in little little shout out to to meg fenn hello she says very nice to have you with us she was says she was trying to comment on twitter live feed but i don't think oh no uh, meg good point i don't believe that twitter uh, gets consumed by this platform. We use a platform called Restream. And whilst it's very clever, I believe it can only consume Facebook and YouTube comments. So thanks for making the effort to to go elsewhere. And she says, Spec, great to see you again. Met several years at WordCamp. Oh, nice. We met at WordCamp London. Um, Paul Lacey, poor Jess. Getting the comments over the face, something that Paul Lacey used to co-host this show. Unfortunately, he decided to stab me in the back and become a traitor. And uh, <laughs> believe me, no, no, it's okay. Everybody looks so shocked when I say maybe, that. Maybe he's the covered his picture. No, that's right. He's the first one to, to <laughs> laugh when I say that. Uh, with there is no bad blood there, but his face used to get blocked out deliberately. People used to write <laughs> deliberately long comments so that when we'd put it on, his face <laughs> would disappear. Uh, I can't remember who that was. Uh, but several people did. Um, ba, 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 ba. Oh, Meg would like you. Meg would like to invite you all to her Twitter space, 4.30 UK time. Is that today, Meg? Uh, if you want to drop something in, please feel free to, to do that. And now Paul, getting me back, says, took all his money and don't regret it. Thank you, Paul. Uh, great to have you with us. It really is. Okay, moving on. Let's change tack a little bit. So 5.9... 
full site editing, block themes, and all of that that jazz. This is a piece by Justin Tadlock over on WP Tavern, where he is expressing the thought that quite possibly in the near future, the customizer will become a bit redundant for most people. In a scenario where you are using a block theme, basically the, there will be no way kind of of getting to the customizer unless you you sort of type in wp dash admin forward slash customize dot php um he points out in this article a few shortcomings off the top of my head the three things that he mentioned are missing at the moment is there isn't like a full way to implement a site favicon which is i guess of significance um the custom css box is unavailable and there's no draft process before switching to the block theme. This, to me, this third one is the absolute killer because obviously in the customizer you can, and in the you know the the ways that you can do that, you sort of inspect what you're doing and make changes, and then if you're not happy, you can sort of back out. Um, the way this is implemented, that seems not to be the case. So he's essentially he's saying a boatload of stuff about what he likes about this, but also the fact that there's a few gotchas at the moment. So tread with care if you are thinking of swapping over to a full block-based theme. I'm going to open it up to the floor if they've got anything. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if all these three options goes into the main settings of the WordPress because these are very important. And if they lie there, they can just consolidate everything. But customizer has already lost importance. If you ask a hardcore page builder user, how many times do they go yeah. there and change things, right? They do everything in the front end. So yes, customizer will go away. Once full site editing is more, I think, graduated, like as of now, it's still in kindergarten stage. So let's see. Indeed. Okay. But Jess, nothing. Okay. All right. Oh, agreed. Yep. It's fine. Yeah, it's okay. No worries. Let's move on. Okay. I feel this piece is going to dominate a goodly proportion of the show. Okay. This is over on Morton. Rand Hendrickson. I hope I've said that right. I always stumble over the, the latter part of your name, the Hendrickson bit. Incidentally, what a great URL, more 10. I mean, you can't make it up, can you? That's absolutely brilliant, more10.com. Now, before I start getting into this topic, I literally don't know where to land on it. Um, it's a very important topic. And it just, when I read this a couple of weeks, like a week ago when it came out, I had to reread it and then I read it again. I think I read it a total of three times and then read it again just before we did the show because I can't distill my thoughts. I don't know where I land on this. But essentially, Morton is trying to wrangle the open source problem. Um, and if you guys don't mind, I'm going to spend like a minute paraphrasing what he says just to give it some context so that we can all sort of jump in. And I would really appreciate anybody's comments on this just to help me clarify my thoughts. Okay, here we go. Morton is concerned that the, 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 the notions behind open source, whilst once really perfect, because they, they were in a, a time maybe like 15 or 20, 30 years ago even, they, they fitted what was going on at the time. Fast forward to now, we have a lot of open source projects which uh, underpin large proportions, not just of things like WordPress, which underpin the very fabric of the internet. So we had a few instances really with Log4j, I think that's mm -hmm. right, um, where an open source project, and I believe there was a few people who had their hands on that, that, that had a critical problem. And where do people like government go to if critical parts of national infrastructure are going to fail because the, the internet is failing because a component of the internet is built on an open source project? Where do we even go for that? And turns out that you need to go in many cases to open source. So that presents a problem. You've got volunteers doing a lot of work. You've got companies who off the back of that free work are able to create billion dollar enterprises. When a problem occurs on like a national level, let's say the in the United States, the American government have a problem, who do they go to? Where do they go if they suddenly need a critical fix to a key component of the internet, which is breaking? And really all they've got is to call up private business 
So they call up the the big blue chip companies who they think run the internet. Well, they can't fix the problem. Where do they go? They in turn go and try and lean heavily on the open source contributors who turn around and say, well, you know, I've got stuff to do. This is what I do. I just do it for a bit of fun. This is a hobby and so on. So this is the key problem. Nobody's getting paid for a lot of this stuff. We've got big business making billions off the back of free labor. And that's the, the nub of the problem. What do we do? And, How can... and yep. the open source projects are have legitimately concerns when big business comes and wants to put their fingers in the pie of controlling how the project is unfolding yeah. right or what what happens with the project so so it's sort of both and right we 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 legitimately have concerns if a big company comes and wants to control how the project is getting developed or what happens next or the governance yeah. of the project. I feel I didn't do justice to that, Morton. I'm sorry in my one minute spiel there. There was a whole lot of other stuff brought in. So, for example, he talks about the fact that certain key players in these scenarios, and, and I, I think in, in some cases he's talking about automatic, um, mm -hmm. you know, th these... There's a lot of profit on the, the commercial side, but that doesn't seem to feed back necessarily into the, the open source side of things. I genuinely don't know what the answer is. I love the open source ethic. I love all that it stands for, but I am confused when open source is being implemented. Uh, like, as an example, the, the, the very things, the thing that is the conduit between us four talking is largely built upon open source platforms, not the software that I'm using because the software in my browser is commercial, but the bits and pieces, the stuff that connects the internet on a sort of backbone level, the software running there is often derived by open source. Who fixes it? Who maintains it? Do we need some sort of governance? Do we need some sort of, I don't want to say it, but company, some sort of organization which oversees all this stuff. So there's my confusion and it's open to well, you. Well, and then to who gets it. to be in control of that? <laughs> right. Right. How, I, how do we maintain that sort of lovely ethos of what open source represents in terms of volunteers coming together to work on something? But when you get start getting people paid and company, then there's control. I mean, who somebody has to be in control in charge. Right. Yeah. And I have my own intuitions on this, but they seem to fail me because my intuitions on this tell me that always the open way is the best way because in almost every touch point of, of my experience with open source, it's a, it's me in control of something that I wish to control. So a website or a server or a computer that's in my house or jurisdiction or whatever it might be. But when you get to the, the, the bigger piece, the backbone of the internet, the fact that all of that is built on open source software and it could so easily fall to pieces, what, genuinely, I don't have an answer. It feels like open source ought to be the way to do it, but how do we maintain that going forward? So again, I'm just going to throw that back at you and see if anybody's got an intelligent, you know, answer which will fix it for everybody. Please. Oh no, <laughs> no, I'm with you. I think there's a lot of both and and a lot of un uncertainty about how to move forward. I would just throw in, you know, there's another piece, and that is um, that we haven't. I don't think Morton deals with, but you know, the, um, maybe he did, but there's the instability of, well, you can have volunteer projects that fall apart because people no longer have time to maintain them. And, and there's the potential for projects like that to get um, basically um, taken over by folks that are more want to be malicious with them, or, you know, there's ways that they can get subverted and, um, so there's some danger there that we haven't really quite figured out how we're going to address. Mm. Yeah. I in think the, in right, WordPress please, perspective, there's always been this talk of, you know, WordPress.org and WordPress.com. There's very little distinction. We all know it because we are into the back end of all things WordPress, but ask someone who is coming new to the ecosystem, they will just go to wordpress.com and get started with it. And again, there's also the problem of rewarding the contributors. Like, how do you reward it? Now, either you become the employee of automatic 
or you become an employee of a company that sponsors and participates in that 5%, you know, give a contribution to automatic. Now, there has to be some other way to, you know, reward people within the community. And I know it's a tightrope walk because finding who contributed how much is another question, but open source has its benefits because it's, it lowers the entry barrier, almost zero. It brings in more people, more eyes can find more bugs. It can help develop the whole ecosystem. Again, it's easier to, you know, pinpoint someone like Matt Mullenberg, oh, he's sitting on the throne and all that. Let me tell you, sitting on the throne is not an easy thing. It, I'm sure he, so, he's got tons of problems himself. So Defender, when you talk about rewarding, are you talking about giving financial compensation? To people? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every need, yeah. everyone needs money, okay, right? To, well, yeah, we all have to make a living at some way, it, right? And, absolutely. But there are certainly a lot of people right now that are volunteering uh, that, that still volunteer. So we, we have people who work for Automatic. We have people who are part of the Five for the Future who are <clears throat> being compensated essentially for their work in but open source. Is but it, there are a lot of people still who are volunteering for yeah, but it is the pace of volunteering, uh, volunteering or pe number of people entering the volunteering mode enough uh, compared to how much the WordPress is growing now? I, I don't know. And and that's a that's a good question. And it's getting more and more complex. And, you know, it, is the is the system with the various contributor teams that we have? Is that the best way to approach it? I don't I don't know. And all this talk, I think, emerged when Blocks was introduced and everyone's saying, oh, no, there was a certain section of, you know, WordPress community like, oh, he doesn't listen to us. When I say he, it's Matt Mullenberg, right? And the other section, oh, it's a revolutionary thing. So again, it depends on who you ask. Now, open source is harmful. Like COVID is harmful. Even COVID vaccine is harmful. Now, it depends on who you ask, right? Yeah. One of the one of the points that Morton makes is that increasingly we find ourselves in a situation where, again, sort of catastrophic example here, where where something terrible goes wrong, and the 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 governments and what have you, they have to have to go and find an answer and basically find somebody who's accountable. They they have to have somebody to blame and somebody who they can turn the screw on and get them to fix it as quickly as possible. The, the the fear that I think Morton might have is that in the future a lot of these corporations will will inject themselves into the projects and pay for seats at the table, if you like, so that they can steer the agenda in the future. And that agenda may prove to be nefarious. You know, given ten years from now, if corporations are driving the agenda of the direction that WordPress takes, I wonder if it will be the the well, same project with the same maybe feel not that it nefarious, has but but certainly toward their own profitability, yeah, as opposed go, yeah. to caring about the individual average user of the project, right? Or yeah. caring about all the users of the project or trying to. I mean, I think that's one of the things that for WordPress, you know, as much as some of us who are developers kind of chafe at it, the all the 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 enormous amount of care for backward compatibility things like that, where we've really made a commitment to um, trying to bring users along as opposed to, you know, a business that just would <laughs> make the change and everybody has to buy the new version and update. Right. Yeah. I'm going to, I don't often do this, but in order to distill the ideas on this, I'm going to read a little bit out loud uh, of what Morton said, because I think he expresses it much better than I do. And so he has a preface to this where he says, we keep quiet about a lot of this stuff. And then he goes on to make these these four points plus some more uh, after that. But he says, let me say these quiet parts out loud. Most of the online services we rely, on for, we rely on for everything from social media to banking to healthcare depend on software written by unpaid volunteers. He keeps coming back to that point. Uh, and when something goes wrong with that software, the responsibility of fixing all those fall on those same unpaid volunteers. Can you imagine the, the, what that would feel like if you were a, a custodian of a crucial part of the internet and you suddenly had to fix it and you literally were on holiday or something like that. It just uh. um, The world runs on open source, but with a few exceptions, there are no meaningful, meaningful governance structures in place to ensure oversight or accountability within the open source community. And we touch 
touched on that a little bit. Open source software is a multi-billion dollar industry, yet the vast majority of open source developers and contributors never get paid a cent for their work, which kind of goes back to Devinder's point. Meanwhile, corporations built on top of open source software have billion dollar valuations. That is the cognitive dissonance that I have a problem with. It's that chasm. No pay against billions of dollars. That's the bit where I most find it difficult to reconcile in my own head. And finally, for now, there is more on the website. Nobody speaks for open source. So when business or businesses, organizations, governments and world leaders need to talk to someone about open source, they have no choice but to turn to venture capitalists and large corporations whose financial success hinges on being able to steer open source projects in directions that are profitable for them uh, to for, adv- for advice. Okay. And, and Peter has a really great comment in the chat. And that is, it's one of the real challenges right now is that volunteers come and go. And it's really easy to sort of stop contributing because there's no financial reward or when you have, you, you have to make a living. So your attention, time and attention need to get placed on other work. Um, and so it really is hard to maintain a kind of con- continuity of, uh, of leadership too. There, there is also this notion that if you contribute enough, you'll gain your seat at the table. Do you know what I mean? If you just put in hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, eventually those contributions will become recognized. Oh, look, such and such a person. They've been doing this for you. Ah, maybe they need a, a seat at the table. And that's difficult. Peter in the comments says, a challenge with volunteering in open source projects is how people come and go. Giving time and attention for free can fall low on the priority list. I'm sure that's totally true Peter. and i'm not sure that that's really true that i mean that's the kind of always the carrot that's held out like it, you can earn your seat at the table if you're around long enough but i don't know that that happens all that often mm. i think it has happened for a few people yeah yeah but not for a lot well and that just means the barrier to entry is even higher because it's only left to those who can afford to play the long game exactly for and that's so a- we have as morton said a very uh particular group of people who can make the decisions because they were in such a position to be able to contribute and get that seat at the table. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not to say that WordPress isn't inclusive, but you know, we hear about the high barrier, just technically speaking, to getting into WordPress. And I think that this is another barrier that's important to expose and to look into. Um, and then one other point, you know, we were talking about how they have to turn to these billion dollar companies to ask about WordPress. It does kind of go the other way, though, sometimes um, where we're going to see an exploit and then people will blame WordPress hmm. as opposed to their own thing. So it, it does go both ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's just such a fascinating subject. I just I, I love the way he wrote it. I love the fact that he's brought it to everybody's attention. There are a couple of sort of ancillary pieces which we're going to follow up with, which kind of tie into it in just a minute. But because people have made some comments, I think only only right to to share them. Uh, first one is Peacher. Uh, who we'll talk about in a moment. She says, Morton has been writing extensively about this, and I agree with him. I believe, if I'm not grossly mistaken, that he eventually left WP partly because of those issues. I'm not sure. Um, And then she goes on to say, when you look at the WP project, there are a lot of key players who are employed, employed by big companies. His point is that open source is supported by those who can afford to contribute. And the afford to contribute bit is not to be underestimated, I guess, if you are... It's hard to to carve carve out an hour a week that you could usefully be spending on your own business or what have you. That is a that is a difficult thing. And then because you've got projects like Five for the Future, which is is difficult if you are just staying above the breadline, just keeping your head above water. But I guess for companies who have larger margins and can work this stuff out into the future a little bit more, maybe that's a little bit easier. So thank We're you for your comment. We're two years into a global pandemic. No. <laughs> everybody's shaken up right now yeah yeah Yeah. thank you yeah good point jess and then andrew didn't realize uh andrew had written a blog post about this but andrew palmer andrew where can you find it if you want to drop the url in the comments if you're still there uh he says he just wrote a blog about this open source contributors need to be rewarded in some way i don't have the answers uh but it is something that needs to be seriously looked at i had not read morton's blog prior to writing my yeah if you cross-reference your points with his that would be a really interesting notion if you came up with some of the same things that he did and then moving on to daniel uh daniel stick around uh because we're gonna 
feature your Twitter thread in a little bit. Uh, we held a small Twitter spaces called WP Talks. I think that might be the one. No, no, I don't think it is, actually. I'm not sure. This Thursday, great discussion, and everyone agrees that there needs to be change, but no one has the magic answer. This is the problem. We don't have the magic bullet. In cor- corporate structures, there's you know there's policies to look back to, and there's, there's things to be followed and procedures, and people can be hired and fired and moved around and... We're not quite the same, are we? One of the points that Morton raises, says Courtney Robertson, um, has been also elevating in the, is that the news right now is corporations plus US government. Clearly, we need a more global take. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay, where did we go from there? I think I did those. Courtney was also saying that uh, she's talking about Peter Ingersoll, who made the comment we mentioned a moment ago. He is a contributor to the training team learn wp and a meetup organizer and courtney's being very nice and saying thank you to peter for doing that and uh and peter replied uh, in kind okay i'm not going to be able to get this url taco because it's uh, it's not available to me it's just almost like an image on the screen at the same time there's a wordpress.org article mentioned there a year in core 2021 you can see that one of the biggest contributing companies is Advise Enzo, which is a one-person company. Actually, that is interesting. We did mention mm-hmm. that a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Wasn't it like in third place behind Yoast or something like that? Uh, I think it was Automatic Yoast and then them. Maybe it was fourth. I can't remember, but it did did show wow. what one person can do. Fourth. Given the uh, was it fourth? Yeah, okay. fourth. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, wow. And Andrew finally, he's got his URL. So this is andrewparmer.com forward slash all these words are hyphenated. Another WordCamp postponed F COVID. <laughs> I was going to say, cheers to that. <laughs> yeah, well done. Well done for not, uh, not not succumbing to leaving that in the URL, making it un- <laughs> unacceptable for all sorts of uh, <laughs> virus filters. Uh, it's mixed with COVID and WordCamp postponements. Okay. Yeah, we heard last week that WordCamp Birmingham had been pulled because of that. Okay. Wow. Lots of nice comments. I knew this would get a load of comments because it's just such an interesting subject. It's something that we're all deeply interested in, but unfortunately, it's always just out of reach isn't it it's just the answer somewhere over there and then the next week you feel the answers over here somewhere but uh, okay let's carry on the the next piece is a video and i can't show the video for fear of getting told off by all sorts of people but this is um it's a video over on youtube and i, I know nothing about american news media so i haven't a clue where to sit on this piece. I don't know if this is a well-respected news channel or if it's just a sort of small parochial one, but it was just an interesting, given everything that we've just said from Morton, it was an interesting piece where this uh, this gentleman, uh, Matt Mullenweg, who is the co-founder of WordPress, was kind of put in the hot seat trying to, trying to sort of justify the way that WordPress works. And the nub of the problem was that well, Matt is sitting on top of a kind of billion, I, I could be wrong in this, but I, I think that it's likely that Automatic is a billion dollar corporation. Forgive me if I've totally grossly misunder, misrepresented that, but it feels like it could be. Um, and he sits on top of that. And so he sits on top of the pyramid of this. Obviously, a lot of the, the stuff that he does over on the dot-com side um, will help WordPress. It sort of trickle down effect, and he sponsors an awful lot of people in the WordPress project. But the point was made in the in the interview that how does he kind of how does he work in his head the idea of open source and yet at the same time running a for profit company? And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw that one, Davinder. I hope you don't mind me throwing it at you. I don't know what what your thoughts are on this. Whether you feel that this is a this is a big debate that goes on. Whether you're you're happy with the status quo or Maybe whether you think like Morton that we need we need governance change. Okay, someone has to rule, right? Whether it's open source or a capitalist company, someone has to be there to control things. So Matt Munulwag is the person who is doing it, and he was doing pretty well. But again, uh, we talk it from the you know bottom up approach. Just imagine how he looks at things from top up. Not just he has to balance the .dot org project. He also has to balance the balance sheet of .com, right? So it's a tightrope walk. And 
a lot of people did accuse or so called you know came forward like blocks was just to you know so that wordpress can compete with wix and squarespace and all that even i felt that way in the beginning i didn't like blocks but now i think blocks was the right direction some people need a little time to see things clearly like me but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yes uh, maybe uh, people will calm down if wordpress.org gets some someone else in the top leadership and he controls the dot com or he heads the dot com then only and obviously there's been talk like there should be difference in you know can wordpress.com can be just marketed as say automatic.com and not wordpress because wordpress by default means wordpress for us it's like downloading.org version so yes there is confusion but then this confusion is beneficial to both of them org as well as .com .com gets all the goodness from .org and .org gets all the money flow well sizable money flow from .com as well so it's a good relationship but obviously people do question this relationship mm. okay bet or jess if either of you have got anything well, anytime you have, I mean, I, I think the vendor's right. Uh, a lot of times you do need leadership, but the question is, I mean, you know, whether it's a business or whether it's an open source project, you need someone to offer leadership. The question is, what's the quality of that leadership? How much are they really listening? How are they paying attention? How are they looking forward? And, um, you know, I, I'm, you know, uh, I'll, I'm going to, I'll just leave it there. Yeah. This is a really difficult one, right? Because there's, it so, the, the, it, it's, I, I'm with Davinda. I think that the, the I think you probably need some kind of uh, for-profit structure in the background that that's that is that's creating a path. Not me. And I would like I to think add scale, one thing. Yeah. Even like nonprofit you... structures have leadership yeah. systems. Yeah. Right. So Regarding, it doesn't have to be know... a for-profit. It just needs to have some clarity about leadership, but quality of the leadership and how that gets implement things get implemented is important. Nice. And regarding, you know, the quality of leadership, because it depends on who is looking and who is questioning, because there are people who will just look for diversity. There are people who will see where this person is coming from. Again, it's a very tightrope walk. It depends on who you are asking, because I'm still trying to understand how the U.S. things work in terms of different types of people, because, again, we have more different types of people here. So, yeah, because, again, it, it depends who you ask. I guess I always, uh, when this conversation comes up, I, I just can't help but to think about Magento. Huh. And they had a wonderful open source community. And then they sold the for-profit part to Adobe. And the market's not growing anymore. Um, shockingly, when they made, you know, $1.6 plus billion off of it, people don't really feel great about giving their time for free to it anymore. Mm. Um, so, you know, I think, I think right now it's, it's right to be asking the questions to what we said earlier. There's obviously no nefarious intent here. I think this is organically grown, but I think we have some cautionary tales from elsewhere and open source communities to see where we don't want to go. And you know what, like, maybe we do want to go there. Maybe we do. Hmm. but that's a question I'm really glad isn't on my desk to make. Yeah, that's right. It's easy for us to pontificate about all these kind of yeah, things. Yeah, for it sure. Would be very, very difficult. I, I just, as with anything, with any sort of structure, it doesn't matter what it is, there's going to be pain points and there's going to be bits where retrospectively you could look back and say, do you know what? That was less than optimal. And, um, and, and I think there, there's bound to be chinks in this armor, you know, and I, I really don't know where to sit on it. I, I, I don't have any axe to grind at all. It was interesting. Uh, fascinating point that's got nothing to do with uh, the topic at hand, but where's it gone? It's Courtney who uh, says that it was just bizarre, wasn't it? That um, CNBC, oh, so CNBC, I don't know what that stands for, but it's an American news channel, I guess. Uh, they they mentioned that he was the WordPress founder, which of course is slightly true. It's 50% true. Um, Mike Little, of course, was the other co-founder. And, uh, and yeah, and usually when Matt says those words, 
he gets it right, but I don't suppose he can be responsible for who put that lower third up as he was just about to speak. But that, well, yeah, interesting point. Um, Andrew Palmer <laughs> making lots of comments. He says, it's not about the money generally, automatic own jetpack, WooCommerce, and a few other things. The simple fact that these plugins are in your face when you hit the dashboard, there is just not a living level playing field. And not just in, in your face, but they won't go away. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. Like, I mean, you, you install well, WooCommerce and the entire setup process is a sales pitch for other things that automatic owns. Yeah, which is the perfect segue, as if luck would have it. The next piece um, is Daniel. I said to Daniel, stick around. I hope he's still here. That would be nice if he was, because... Um, I, I don't know. I don't use Twitter very much, and I certainly don't really know. I think this is a Twitter thread because it says thread at the top. Um, and I, forgive me if I'm getting all the nomenclature wrong here, but um, Daniel put together a really lovely Twitter thread where he, it sounds like almost for the first time, or at least for the first time in a long time, he went through and started to make some comparisons between the the sign-up experience, the beginner's experience if you're on the dot com side and if you're on the dot org side and i confess i do not ever never ever go to the dot com side and play around it's just not something i do if i want to interact with wordpress i'm going to dot org and i'm going to download it and dump it on a server somewhere and so some of the visual dissim dissimilarities were quite amazing so he starts off with the fact that you know as davinda said earlier wouldn't it be quite likely that if you wanted to find a, have a WordPress website, you are going to hit .com. Um, if you're a, a novice, rather than the .org side of things, you're probably going to hit the .com because the .com is kind of the thing that you hit, right? Everybody goes to the .com. Um, so there's that. And then he goes on to sort of describe the onboarding experience. And, and in almost every case, Daniel feels that the .com side is slicker, better, well, m more well presented. The pixels look nice. You know, there's a, there's a party going on over there and there's a lot of thought and time and energy been put into how it all looks. Um, I will, of course, link in the show notes to his Twitter thread, but his um, name is Schultz Smith, which is S-C-H-U-T-Z-S-M-I-T-H. And you can find this uh, Twitter thread. I don't even know what date it was created, but it's you can see it on the screen. It's at the state of WordPress. Uh, it begins. And I just thought it was really curious because I never go over there. He talks about how theming is easy to do. The biggest one for me was how posts and page um, administration just looks really nice. So much nicer than the, the setup we've got over on the .org side, which I never thought was a bad thing. But now that I've seen the .com thing, I'm thinking, oh, I want that. Um, so I think basically, the long and short of it, please, sir, could we have some of the .com UI into the .org side of things? It would be so nice if we could. So right. I infrequently go to .com, but every time I do, because almost all of my experience has been over on the .org side, I have a lot of frustration and a lot of who moved my cheese and where did it go now uh, kind <laughs> of moments. Um, but I do think that you're right. There's some nicer things over there. But And if I were only in that, if I only saw that, it probably would be a you know, a, a more intuitive experience, but, you know. Yeah. I feel the um, same about blocks sometimes too. It's like, uh, I used to know how to do this in the classic editor and now I don't, can't figure out how to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to show the incredibly memorable, easy to type in URL that you need to, uh, you need to achieve if you want to see this thread. I'm not going to read that out. Um, it's a shame there's no kind of like permalink structure that you can, can you do that on Twitter? Is it possible to say he I want pin this? It to the, he could pin it to the top of his profile. Daniel. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> go and uh, go, go and go and stick it to the top. Pin it, and then we won't have any problem. Anyway, I just thought it was a really nice uh, enterprise, a nice endeavor. Go and check it out. You might be surprised if, like me, you never use the the dot com side of things, and you're always using the dot org. You might think to yourself, "Hmm, that looks nice." Could we have that? Anything from Devinda or Jess? I think he should make a blog post out of it and make it a community post so that all other changes that I find or someone else find, let's make it a big one and then ask question, hey, why it's different? Um, Daniel, to you, if you're still watching this, I am curious, actually, being such a WordPress person, why did you choose Twitter 
to to write this? Was it because you've got an audience there and you just get the feedback straight away? Because uh, to Tavinda's point, I, I, as I was reading it, I was thinking, this is fascinating, isn't it? Because you've got to lump your whole set of thoughts into little tiny boxes. And then I presume you have to click enter, send that tweet, and then follow it on from another one. And I was just curious as to why you did it over on Twitter as opposed to in a blog post that you then linked to. Um, it certainly got me reading it, so it worked. <laughs> so well done um bu- 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 yeah michelle keeps saying she's going to teach me twitter nobody's going to teach me twitter michelle it's honestly you 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 can try and i will fail uh i just don't get twitter but thank you i appreciate your endeavor you constantly try but i constantly disappoint right okay moving on this is the bit where i get to tell you about peacher um WP Builds until about, I don't know, about a year ago, we we were doing a monthly UI UX session with Peachy Neri. And if you don't know Peachy Neri, she's a UI UX expert. She's in the thread. Look, there she is writing comments like that. And we've decided to resurrect the, the format. We're going to do it each and every month. We're going to do one user contributed um, website. In other words, if your expertise is not UI and UX, and you've got something which you believe is kind of nearing completion, but you would like a critical eye to look over it, somebody who really knows what they're doing, then Peach is going to do, excuse me, one of those each month. And if you would like yours to be the one that's featured, there's a simple little form. It's got the, the minimum amount that I could think was useful. Um, and it's at wpbuilds.com forward slash UI, wpbuilds.com forward slash UI. And then Peacher will stick those into, I guess, a spreadsheet or something, and she'll try to go through them. But the intention really is that Peacher will put it on the screen and then she'll go through um, and look for bits and pieces where you know she feels that this is excellent and done brilliantly, and perhaps also go through things where um, she thinks you could maybe do with a little bit of help. We're also going to be going through a, a list of her bits and pieces. She's going to bring along some sites which she think exemplify good practice. So it's not just about user-submitted stuff. There will also be some things which Peacher is bringing along to demonstrate. So I'd really, if you want to go and share that URL, wpbuilds.com forward slash UI, that would be really nice. We're going to do it. The date, as you can see on there, is Tuesday, the 25th of January, 3 p.m. So it's about now-ish um, in, what is that? Like, I don't know, eight days time or something like that. Right. Sorry to hijack the show, but I thought that was uh, really useful. WPBuilds.com forward slash UI. And she's put a comment. What she said here, Peaches said, to be clear, we'll only do one submitted site per session. Yes. I don't know if I made that point, but I'll make it now. Yeah, we're going to do one user submitted site. This gives us time for another piece of content, hopefully. Great. Okay. Fantastic. I don't know about you. I have switched off all the notifications on my on my everything. Uh, my Chrome install doesn't notify me of anything. My phone doesn't notify me of anything except text messages from my immediate family. They get through. Everything else is on a need-to-know basis because I was basically, I'm sure some of you can you know, get what I'm on about, I was a slave to the notifications to the point where I would literally take the phone out of my pocket at a meal because it went bing bong and what's that all about? Really? I should be spending time in the moment with the people that I'm surrounded by. So switch them all off. Um, And there seems to be a bit of a trend going on at the moment for platforms coming along where they are not promoting the always notified, always in sync with everybody. There's a lovely, beautiful platform called Zip Message, which does um, asynchronous video. So you shoot a video send it to somebody. When they have the time, they shoot a video and reply. And the idea isn't, I need it now. It's just whenever you feel you've got the space to do it. This is is an app that I've come across called Twist. I haven't used it. I'm just letting you know. And it's a bit like Slack, but with all of that, how to describe it, FOMO, all of that pressure deliberately stripped out of it. I don't really know what that means, but I just wanted to open a conversation. Bet, Davinda, Jess, Who's guilty of 
like slave to the notifications. And if that's the case, do you want to stop that in your life or is that something you relish in your life? In Anybody just go for it. I wouldn't, I, I mean, I wouldn't say a slave to the notifications, but I think we do both in our agency, right? So we, we have times where we let one another know I'm in a meeting or I'm head down in this project. Uh, you might, uh, it might be a bit before I get back to you. But then there are other times where we really do, because we're a totally remote team and we have been since the beginning, where we really are sort of expecting one another to be fairly um, rapid with the um, replies because we can be bottlenecks for one another on, on projects. So we're wanting to avoid that sort of bottleneck of I've got to wait till I hear back from this person before I can move forward. So we, we do a mix of both. And I think we try to do a good job of sort of um, communicating that when new people are coming on the team, that there are things that are, these are things that it's okay to be asynchronous about. We don't, not in any rush about. These are things that we need to have a little bit more priority response to or something. Okay. Yeah, no, that's a bit of both. That works. My, mm -hmm. my problem with a bit of both for me is that the little bit of both always ends up consuming the same amount of time that all of it would have taken up. You know what I mean? Just, I can't sort of segment it, segment in my life. Okay. That needs to come through. It's the mere fact that I hear the bing bong. I just drop everything. My attention is destroyed and I go back and I genuinely mm. cannot get back to where I was five seconds ago. I really, I have to tell myself, right, where was I? Uh, and, and I find that is, is so disruptive to my entire well, day. We, we do things differently. Like instead of taming the phone, just tame the internet. I just turn off the internet when it's not the time to do things. Huh. Other than, so that's how it happens. Like when we are, when we are like, even during family time, the internet is off at home. So no one, even if you pick up your phone, nothing work, or even you're supposed to turn off the internet on your phone. The Wi-Fi goes off. You just spend few hours without the internet. Like that's how it is. I don't know if it works in other households, but here it works perfectly. And everyone actually talks to each other. That's very important. Actually. The how problem old, you is have when kids you, that are how old? Yeah, I have a seven-year-old daughter, so yeah, she does complain. But again, it's complain. It's about parents who can, you know, because we are very strict on how much time she spends on her iPad because it's a pandemic in uh, among kids. Honestly speaking, like how much screen time they have it, like we control it really well. Uh, I think I'm proud of it. Like, oh, <laughs> I think that's really nice. I do think that that if that's the it's like anything, right? If that, I guess, if that was the, that's just the position. If the, if the Wi-Fi goes off five minutes before the meal begins, and it's going to go off for the remaining two hours, and that's just the protocol. That that's just the way the house is run, you know. And even during, you know, here we have this habit of going for afternoon nap during, like everyone goes to sleep oh. during the afternoon. So during that time, everything is, I put my phone on airplane mode. I don't want to receive anyone's call because when you're sleeping, you're sleeping, even if it's for just 30 minutes or one hour. Uh, mm -hmm. That's how mm -hmm. I do it. Uh, I just kill the thing right at the bottom. I think yes. for me, it's, it's not so much the notifications as much as it is messages coming from everywhere and it's really hard to manage it all. You know, um, at our work, people don't realize this, but Liquid Web has over a thousand employees. Oh. Um, there are a lot of people doing a lot of things and there's a lot of engagement. Um, but you know, I, I've watched the evolution from when, you know, productivity experts told us to check your email twice a day, not, no more. Um, to Slack coming in, and then hip chat for those who don't remember hip chat, and then there was Slack, and now Slack is often used in in lieu of email, and so people are sending important things through these messaging platforms, where you have to keep track of your notifications, you have to keep track of where these conversations are happening, or you just lose these important requests, and I'm not sure that another tool is the answer. I think we can continue to try to technology our way out of bad behaviors but ultimately i think it's going to come down to everybody agreeing to just don't do that <laughs> well I love a combination that of just don't do that but also then some self-discipline about yeah getting getting over the i've got to answer every ding yes you know yeah. I, I just yeah. don't and sometimes and you know then there's a balance in there somewhere because you know there's text messages that come in that are family things that i really like I'm catching up on, you know, two hours of Snapchat things from, 
young adult kids. So, yeah. I just find this this whole thing is absolutely fascinating. And I love Jesse's phrase, we're going to technology our way out the uh, towards the answer. I think that's brilliant. The One of the things which is like red rag to a bull to me, which kind of lights the blue touch paper, is if 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 somebody's like come round to, to my house, uh, you know, I've invited them round and their phone goes off in my, and they just talk on the phone. They just oh cut God. me right off and they just start talking on the phone. Oh, I that's, that's so a lack weird. of discipline. Like, no, put it down. Yeah. Stop. I don't have Wi-Fi for them. Davinda, if I had a kill switch at that point, I'm going to try that, Davinda. I am going to try switching off the Wi-Fi and then I'm going to hide because <laughs> objects <laughs> will be thrown. I will be My hit with all sorts of projectiles. <laughs> so, so you know, we talk about this as if it's sort of a uh, kind of a static pattern all the time, but things go up and down, right? So you have a big project that's happening. I'm paying more attention. I, I, I'm in Illinois right now waiting for the birth of a grandbaby nearby, right? So I'm paying attention to the texts and things, right, in a different way than I would maybe... Uh, yeah. you know, in a, at a different time. And so I think things do change uh, depending on what we have going on at work and at home. And, uh, you know, that, so just, I don't know, finding a balance somewhere in there for you. Yeah. I, Congratulations, I feel, by the way. That's so yeah, exciting. That is tremendous news. You know, obviously, if the text put message goes off for the, during for this, this show, <laughs> we expect you to answer that message and yes. clear right out of here. <laughs> um, no, I put it right. in... Yeah, for this, I put it in airplane mode. But, you know, my wife is sitting right over there and I would know if something yeah. happened. <laughs> like, um, Taco beautifully sums up how utterly, you know, I flip and flop on this. He says, the reason that I'm here is, uh, oh, no, I've picked the wrong one. Uh, he says, the reason that I'm here is because you sent me a notification on Facebook to let me know that you started the live stream. Yes, guilty as charged. Absolutely. I'm just so bad at this and then he says nathan what you can do is add an open wi-fi network that's not connected to the internet oh that's ingenious people phone will connect and not get any notification yes they'll think they're connected but in fact they won't be i'm not getting any new emails doesn't it does it not that say is there not some genius. little indication on the ui at the top there which has a little cross next to the wi-fi signal or something like that um yeah yeah i get what you mean my my, my thing is that i just I just um it's binary. If it if it pings, I am instinctively drawn towards it. I find it very difficult to to make a okay, I'm I'm having an hour off, ignore it. I need to put that phone under a cushion in another room to but make that's it a stop. conditioned thing and you can yes. figure out a way to Yes. Uh, it's horrible. Can you figure out a way to get deconditioned though. I need to right. move to like the Gobi Desert or something. <laughs> uh, that's probably it. Or, or watch the social dilemma so two or three more times. That you just sort of start letting it go. Right? Yeah. Have you? There's a really good podcast actually around this topic. I'm just going to quickly look on my screen. Do forgive me, but I do think it, it's worth dropping in. What is it called? It's called Undivided Attention or Your Undivided Attention. Yeah, Your Undivided Attention. And it's a podcast where each week or slightly more frequently than that, they drop an episode going through this entire process uh, about why this is happening and how you can mitigate it and, and what the tech companies are doing. Because they're very technical people, what the tech companies are doing in order to make sure that you are disengaging as little as possible because you can yeah. bet that there's billions of dollars resting on your your and my engagement every minute of every day. Anyway, there we go. If you like asynchronous, it's called Twist. Maybe go and check it out. But certainly check Zip Message out. Andrew Palmer says he's a user. It's brilliant. It's so good. Uh, go and check it out. Right, okay, moving on. Let's get back to some news. Oh, so this is this is a sad thing that we have to cover. I wish this news didn't exist, but it does. We mentioned earlier that WordCamp uh, Birmingham I think you could pronounce it Birmingham, don't you, in the United States? Our oh, yeah. equivalent, which is spelled the same, is pronounced Birmingham. Um, okay, so WordCamp Birmingham got cancelled this week. And, and obviously, you know, there's reasons for that, largely to do with COVID and restrictions on movement and things like that. And so this is a piece uh, by Harry Shankar R uh, entitled, uh, by the way, it's on make.wordpress.org. And it's he's proposing that there are some mandatory safety measures for in-person events uh, for 2022. As I said earlier, 
totally undecided as to whether I should go to WordCamp Europe, largely because I don't want to be stuck in a in another country, not sure of what that would mean. Should I test positive for COVID? Would I be allowed back? Would I have to isolate at my own expense? Would I have to buy a second airplane ticket and all of those kind of things? And uh, and he's saying, what about if we we made the best of what we've got and try to come up with some sensible rules which would at least minimize things? Some of them I'm sure are very sensible. So he's saying things like mandatory masks like everywhere just if you're in a word camp wherever you are you wear a mask doesn't matter whether you're in a corridor um, or in a speaking uh, room or you know queuing up for lunch you just wear a mask that would be one recommendation Um, more prominent messaging over on the the individual websites about the fact that these safety procedures are going to be in in place and please respect them because I suppose there's always going to be a bunch of people who would turn up and have contrary opinions to that and then would be able to say, but I didn't know. Um, And if it was made clear that, well, you had plenty of opportunity to know. Mandatory temperature checks, that's interesting. Those those in the UK have sort of seemed to have ground to a halt. We're now doing all these lateral flow tests where you prod things in your mouth and what have you. The the temperature check seems to have gone by the wayside. Um, Obviously, sanitizing hand sanitizer and all that kind of stuff maintaining social distancing i feel that's the one which is going to be the hardest because if you want a socially distanced venue you're going to spend a lot of money especially in cities like london or you know new york i guess a big room to accommodate 100 people is going to cost you a ton of money and uh, contact tracing have something whereby prior to the event you've you've just handed over all of your contact details so that you know, who have you met with in the last week or what have you said that those kind of things can, those authorities can get the ball rolling. There's nothing here I disagree with. I I don't, I I don't know what side of the fence you're on with all of that, but I think all of that makes sense to me. So the hard thing I think besides the social distancing really is a lot of our word camps really have had eating and drinking as a part of them. Yeah. A meal and, and then it's really hard to, you know, you can't wear a mask. So how do you get people distance and seated for a meal yeah i was gonna say that's why i agree with everything but the contact tracing might be tricky yeah yeah especially if it's international it's going to be more or less impossible you know, nice. um i went to a, a conference back in september in portland everybody had vax we did a little pre-check thing everybody people were really good about wearing masks except while we ate lunch uh and uh then after the event, one person tested positive, but they, I mean, I, I think part of it was the culture of the organization. They just sort of let everybody, there were probably like a hundred people there. They let everybody know. So-and-so has tested positive. He thinks he was seated in this part of the room for most of the day. You know, you might not even know who that person was. You might, if you didn't meet them face to face, right? But he was in this air section of the room for the seating and the lunch and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I thought that was really handled very well. And so it's possible to do. Mm. I'm not saying anybody at a word camp would do this, but I saw a tweet that said, if this pandemic has taught me anything, it's that some of y'all would 100% hide your zombie bite. <laughs> I can, I can hear it. Yeah, I can yeah. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Not I'm everybody's going to come forward and be like, hi, I was there. I have COVID. Yeah, I was sitting yeah. here. And like, that's... that sucks. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. But that's, yeah. again, well, behavior. especially, you know, especially now that we have this Omicron that's so contagious, it's sort of like you could be, and, and we're seeing more and more cases where people did exactly the right things. They got vaccinated, they got boosted, they've been wearing masks, they've been being careful, and they still got it. And so I think that lowers the stigma in some ways for a lot of us now. So. Yeah. I just think that in order to bring these events back, even if it even if it doesn't have substantive differences on the actual capacity to catch Omicron, because it sounds like basically if you if you're standing, you know, downstream of somebody who's got Omicron, it's it is a significant chance that you're going to catch it, even if you're in the open air. The being seen to be making uh, endeavors to do these things and messaging, encouraging people to you know, take the advice that's on offer and all of those kind of things. And then enforcing things like if you are going to say you got to wear a mask, that's, you know, that's the way it's going to be in this event. Thank you very much. Um, Okay. So Davinda, anything on that? Well, it's not going anywhere. Like Mm -hmm. uh, we had normal 
November and December, I attended a lot of events with more than 500 people without masks. Nothing happened. And it, we didn't have any cases here. Like there were like two or three cases nice. in whole city. But last two weeks, the cases has gone like this or new variant. It has gone by 20x times. Like we are at the same case level like last year. But the good thing is hospitalization is very, very low. Like even though people are getting infected, they are not landing in hospital with uh, oxygen and all that stuff. So because most of them are vaccinated, but then again, there's a lot of discrepancy. Like people say, you need to get vaccinated, but vaccinated people are also getting COVID. So I don't know who's making money or who's making fool of what, but that's the reality. I think the only solution is to hide in a box <laughs> and uh, just stay there for the whole of 2022. <laughs> if you know. Well, in some ways, that's, kind of, that's what we're having to do, right? We, we yeah. drove from Oregon to Illinois to be here. We quarantined, we tested, and now we're just kind of like in this bubble because newborns yeah. and toddlers can't really get back. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that anybody that's lived through this period will have a really, like, there'll be stories to tell about this and mm. we'll all look back on this. Yeah. And, do you really remember when and grandchildren be like oh that sounds horrible uh oh we live through that you know we'll have our own little stories but anyway there we are good on um i forget the gentleman's name i do apologize it was harry Nathan? shanker oh, no. um oh, oh, harry. put those harry. suggestions together it's a proposal um put that together on 10th of january it seems like sensible stuff to me so we'll see see what see where that goes right we're quickly running out of time so just a few quickies before we get on to our silly stuff at the end that's got nothing to do with wordpress uh Extendify. Uh, Sarah Gooding is writing in WP Tavern this week. Extendify have launched a... So there's a free version of their pattern library. I, I don't need to tell you what patterns are. You can basically click a button if you're in a post or a page, uh, and the button is up here at the top. Uh, I'm sort of if you're listening to this on audio, you know where the button's going to be. It's near the, it's on the left hand side, but where you know where publish is, but over on the other side. You click that, a modal pop up window comes up, and their extensive library of um, Patterns uh, appears. You can get, I think it's five a month for free if you are on the the free version from .org, but you need to presumably plug in some kind of API key to unlock that. It sounds like it's $49.50 uh, for one website for a year if you want to, to get access to all of it. You'll have to be fairly judicious with your downloading. Um, but if you're into patterns and you see this is the way forward, maybe it's worth shelling out a few dollars to see what you make of it. There are some other rivals that do this kind of stuff, things like Stackable and Cadence. I know they have their uh, their own different patterns, and I don't know if it's called patterns on the Cadence side, but certainly they've got a library just like this, and you can download the different rows and, and what have you. But anyway, so this is interesting. You can read the piece on WP Tab and Extendify launches new pattern library. It was on the 12th of January. The exciting times, all this pattern library stuff. It just makes making websites drop dead easy doesn't it we're all going to be out of a job no <laughs> no <we're> no <laughs> <laughs> because people can have the uh uh the access to do stuff but they can making it look pretty and be effective is still they'll need help <laughs> yeah yeah okay all right. All right. Moving on then. Um, Davinda, I'm going to throw this one right at you because you put this in the show notes. This is security news. Yeah. Um, the article says that the vulnerabilities have gone up by 142%. Like they were 10,000 plus last year, like 2020. 2020 and in last year prior to that, they were just 2,000. So it clearly indicates like... Uh, even though it looks like the vulnerabilities has gone up, I think it's people who are detecting those vulnerabilities that has gone up. And now people are getting more serious about the security stuff. And a lot of people have started using security services, which is really good, especially on the agency level. Like earlier, not many people would use it. They will just install a security plugin, which is different than security service. So yeah, it's a good change. Um, it sounds on the face of it to be a startling increase, doesn't it? 143% or 142% increase. It sounds like a lot, but I guess it's just a product of WordPress being the uh, the big player. This is where and WordPress it, has gone up from 33 to 43 now, 43%. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Bigger yeah. pie, bigger, bigger, bigger goodness, bigger money, and bigger problems. Quite interesting. Bigger 
Yeah, yeah the thing that came out of the article, there's this idea of um, a scoring system. I think it's called CVS. That's certainly what I'm seeing on the screen at the moment. There's this sort of um, dispassionate scoring system from naught, I guess, up to 10, where a 10 is literally the sky is falling. And I think Log4j was, in fact, the first 10. Um, because it really was that bad. But most, according to this, most WordPress vulnerabilities, because of the nature of it's to do with, you know, your own personal website, they they generally tend to score uh, pretty pretty low in the sort of five to seven region, which is not the sky is falling and it's you need to get this fixed um, for yourself kind of thing. Um, but still, like you say, Davinda, interesting. Okie doke. Right. Bet, over to you. Yeah, so we do a lot of stuff with uh, web accessibility, which is making websites usable, functionable for people with uh, various disabilities. And uh, web accessibility is never a one and done thing. Any, anytime you add new content to your site, you can introduce accessibility issues. And so we launched a um, kind of New Year's resolution themed uh, campaign for the first of the year to try and help people with website accessibility. So um, there's a post here in the show notes about that has some great free resources. If you're just starting out with web accessibility, there's a kind of a handout guide, ebook, and then we have some uh, best practices posts and we're offering some discounts on accessibility audits during the month of January. So oh, just nice. Trying to, just trying to really help people get resources and uh, learn about accessibility during the month of January. So. We're, we're a little bit tight on time, but tell us about the audits. What do you do? What happens Ooh. if I approach you and say, look, I've got this project. I'm, I'm almost mm -hmm. finished. I just want to make sure that I've ticked the accessibility box and I approach you. Yep. What, what do we go through? So we, we base our audits uh, play. We have like th uh, le different levels of audits based on the number of URLs or views. Like sometimes the URL would stay the same, but the view would change uh, that you want us to look at. So we can start with just one URL and that would get you a lot of the theme based things. But if you have a lot of different templates that might, be different. So we do one, we do uh, 10, we do 25 uh, URLs and, and kind of go uh, up from there. And we do what's called, that's a sampling audit. So we're not get looking at every page of your site, but we're looking at, um, you know, that's usually enough to get what you need and extrapolate to the rest of the website. So is it is it with a human touch as opposed to some kind oh, of accessibility yes. software? Which, yeah, okay. Yes, yeah. so we'll use some automated testing, but this is with our, mostly with our non-disabled, specially trained developers, but then we also, um, we don't guarantee that a disabled um, uh, tester will be on your site, but if our, uh, our folks have a question, and usually it's about screen readers, about how a screen reader user will handle a particular um, thing on a, on a page, then we bring in some some uh, disabled testers as well. And then we also, it produces a 25 page PDF that gives you all the information about what we tested and what we found and uh, recommendations for going forward. And then we do an hour of consulting after that. So we'll walk with you, help you understand that. So a lot of times people will hire us to do the audit. And then if they have a regular developer they're working with, they'll bring that developer to the consult and ask all the technical questions then. We can That's be available to do the continuing cons consultation, but it's included in the audit. North American time zone or you're open to anybody anywhere? Um, we're open. I think we could be open. We haven't done a lot in other yep. places yet, yep. but but we yep. could be open to that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Okay. So the URL is um, bhmbyte, sorry, bizsites.com. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> and then all with hyphens, resolve to have an accessible website in 2022. I'll endeavor to put that mm -hmm. in the show notes as well, but that's brilliant. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. We're going to move on to the non-WordPress related stuff. Just something which eh, sort of ground my gears this week. And I just find that this is... This kind of, for me, encapsulates the human condition perfectly. This is <laughs> Lufthansa, Lufthansa the airline. That's how much it's got to do with WordPress. We're talking about aeroplanes. Lufthansa confirmed that they had flown 18,000 flights in a recent period uh, with the planes completely empty. This, of course, is the, the well-known problem that we're all thinking about each and every day of the week, I'm sure, about the fact that if, you, if you're an airline company and you want to keep a, a particular route open, if you fly from New York to London and you want to keep that slot, you've got to fill that. You've got to put the plane in the air, basically. And if you don't put the plane in the air, then they take the route off you and give it to somebody else. So, love to... Ah! 18,000 empty flights! Did, 
is this is it me am i overreacting or is this is pure madness like isn't environmental isn't the environmental thing enough of a problem without flying empty planes just so that somebody can say yep tick that box did it oh. say over what time period that was it did and i've forgotten there we go da, 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 da. i can't remember i think it was last year last but i've forgotten year. i have forgotten but just bonkers right it's just the sort of thing that you you try to if you if your three-year-old child came up and said to you daddy can you explain why this happened you'd be like <laughs> uh right um yeah okay well it's because we're human that's about all I'd have. There just seems to be no logic to this. And with the tiny amount of time which remains to us, I, I just don't even get this. This, right, the, I am <laughs> seeing this everywhere. The I go onto Facebook and I go onto Twitter. There's these little arrangements of squares, seemingly mostly white with quite a few green ones. And then I see something like 4 slash 206. And I go, okay. That's fun. You've got some squares. What the heck is Wordle? Who put this? Who was this? It's me. It's, it's so easy. The vendor. <laughs> it's so easy to play. And, you know, it really, and I usually play it when I'm walking after my lunch outside. So I just While play you're for... walking? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not walking on the road. I was just walking in the garden and all that so it's just i do it for five minutes and it just recharges your brain to think right you know and really it's not about english test or something but you know it's all about like figuring out the word and it's very simple like you just press you just make any word uh, five letter word and if it comes green that means that alphabet is at the right position in the final word so you just try for two three times and you finally find the word okay Right. Okay. If you don't, then try again okay. tomorrow. All right, Javinda, right. I know nothing about this game. <laughs> there it is on the screen. Tell me very quickly, what do I need to do? I, there's a keyboard. There's, yeah, a grid, press... there's a grid of empty squares. Put, what do I do? Put a five-letter word just, in there. What? Try any five-letter word. Panic. Panic. So P -A -N -I -C. one of the strategies. P-P-A-N-I-C. Okay. Now press enter. Now, enter. Oh, that was delete. Okay, enter. Yeah. So, okay, so just for those of you that are listening, the, the P, A, N, and the C of that went to gray, and the I, for reasons unknown, went to brown. That means now the what? I word is, I alphabet is there in the final word, and all other words are not there in that final word. Okay, so this final word on the grid has an I here. No, well, it can be I anywhere. If I was green, uh, then it means that the I was in the uh, you know third or fourth oh, position. Did you ever okay, play so... Mastermind, Nathan? No, I confess okay. I didn't. So if I type in early, oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so I can see, I can see why it's addictive. I just got, click I on, got click quite on a nice feeling gear, from getting the gear icon at the top right. So that will give you a better idea. Gear icon at the top right. Okay. Click on that. That will give you the exact, uh, you know, no, not that one. Mm. No, no, close it. Close the other gear icon. The, the, no, the, the question mark. Uh, question mark on the. Oh, okay. Oh, so this I see. is how it works. Yeah. Okay. So if it's green, then so that means it's, it's... It, it's in the exact spot. So it's in the first right. place in the final right. one. If it's, if it's brown, it features in the final word. And if it's grey, it doesn't feature. So I know that my final word contains an E, an R, and an I, but not necessarily in those places. Exactly. See, exactly. you've learned it. And it does WPBins. not have the other letters. <laughs> I've got it. Um, okay, right. It's fascinating. But why everybody? I think I am the only person who doesn't play this. No, I don't play it. I played it once. Oh, bravo, but <laughs> I, I love I love puzzles. I do Sudoku's all the time. I do logic puzzles, but th I'm terrible at word things. So uh, this and you know cryptograms and all that kind of stuff. I hate these. So and, um, you know I did it once, but it is a funny... kind of a thing that I think people like that it's fairly quick. It takes ten minutes at the most, and it's a once a day. It's limited, and then everybody can socially share it. And okay. The funny Let's... part is, like, I asked my daughter, and she said, "Is there an app that I can install and play it?" I said, "No, this is old school. You have to go to the website URL and then play there." Yep. Oh, yep. really? Okay, yep, so it's not even an app. Oh, that's it. okay. So yeah, it's 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 an app, app, I, I can't imagine doing this in a language that's not my first language. 
Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, I it's don't know enough five-letter words. In At least it's not four-letter words. For Imagine us, a lot of language. languages are first language. So English, I, uh, things are different here, like in terms of languages. Yeah, yeah, I know. Everywhere in, except in the U.S. Um, <laughs> we, I, I did read an article yesterday that the guy that invented this invented it for his um, girlfriend, a uh, live-in partner, um, as a kind of a way to amuse themselves on the pandemic. They very carefully did a lot of research. So it's there's no accident that it's five letter words and you get just six chances. If you get to the bottom and you don't have all green, you don't win that day, right? But um, yep. But they've got six chances. So that's it. And then uh, that he has put in all of these words and it's not every five letter word. They took out some things that are obscure. And I did learn by doing it that if you try to put in something that's not really a word, it will. Uh, yeah, it doesn't wait, accept it. it. Wait, it, it doesn't accept you, it. You yep. just said something. Is Does everybody have the same grid on to everybody today? Everybody has the same one today. <gasps> yes. That's, yes. The that's the bit. That's yes. the bit that makes yes. it same, cool. I same get word it. for 24 hours. For ah, okay. Now I get it. Because like yeah. I could just play this all day and I wouldn't get any satisfaction. So the idea is you're, you are trying to beat well, everybody else on the same day and get a better score. I get it. But you only I get, get one chance per day. You don't get to play it all day. Not even if you clear your cookies. Yeah, you can do the well. cheating part. <laughs> There's always a way. There's always a way. Okay, but, um, Jess, quickly, before we finish, have you got, give us a five-letter word. Let's see. Uh, oh, gosh, oh, see, i got to think about it. Okay. This is the thing. Yeah. Uh, but did Devinda you guys see Chad Paco's uh, note that there's a Dutch version? Oh. I mean, shows, S-H-O-W-S. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Taco says he's had to he's, he's muted Wordle on Twitter to get rid of all those squares. Yeah, that's the problem. It's taking yeah. over. Um and also Peter says Wordle's awesome. Uh look, Wordle got the most comments. That's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> Going back to the previous subject, uh Bet's pat on the back for you from Michelle Frechette. She said that you did a great job, your team. And you did a great job in the underrepresented in tech. We did an audit for them, an accessibility yeah. audit for them, yeah. Uh, okay, I can't think of any five-letter words either. So we're, we're going to round this episode out on abject failure. In fact, <laughs> that's what this episode is going to be called. I'm going to call it abject Perfect. failure, episode number 192. I appreciate you guys being with me today. That's been quite a lot of fun. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. We do this each yeah. week, uh, 2 p.m. UK time. I hope, I know Jess will be coming back, and I hope that Bet and Davinda will fill out the form and come back. I would really appreciate that. We do this slightly awkward thing at the end where we have to wave, and the waving is just so that I can get a nice piece of thumbnail art. So if you could just slide your hand in, just give it a little bit of a wave. That's perfect. Thank you if you've joined us um, and made a comment. I really appreciate you guys coming in as well. Bet's still waving. She's totally in on the, all the waving. And uh, we will see you next week, hopefully. It'll be out published tomorrow, but thanks for your cooperation, and uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for having bye -bye. us. Bye.